evening. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're certainly thankful and grateful to the Almighty God for our being here. Our being here is not against our will, but it is a gift from God. We're certainly thankful to the Heavenly Father for smiling on us and allowing us one more time to come together. So much is going on in our world today. So many things are happening. They're happening for reasons which you and me don't understand. But yet we have the assurance. We know that no matter what's going on, God is still in control. Sometimes we have to remind ourselves ours is not to wonder why, but ours is to hear and obey. Let us get started tonight as we continue in our study, as we continue to talk about Growing your relationship with God. Let's look at one of the old standards. Father alone. Tempted and tried, we're off made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long. While there are others living about us, never molesting. Father, along we know all about it. Father, along we understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. When death has come and taken our loved one, it leave our home so lonely and dreary. Then do we wonder why others prosper, living so weak year after year. Father, along we know all about it. Father, along we understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Faithful till death, said our loving master, a few more days to labor and wait. Toll of the road will then seem as nothing as we sweep through the beautiful game Father alone will know all about it Father alone will understand why Cheer up my brother live in the 
sunshine will understand it all by and by. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we are thankful and grateful for you have given us the opportunity, O oh God, to once again be in uh, the study of your word. We thank you, O oh God, for last night's laying down and this morning's early rising. We thank you for you have blessed us beyond our wildest imagination. You have looked beyond our faults and supplied our every need. And for that, we say thank you, sir. We thank you because we realize that it is by your grace and your mercy that we live and breathe. We thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you for being in our right mind. We just ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would continue to keep your loving arms of protection around us. We ask you right now, O oh God, to look on the sick among us. Touch those that are sick and heal their feeble bodies. We ask you, O oh God, to look on the bereaved among us. Help them to bear the burden, the sorrow of losing a loved one. And help them to understand that these things must come to pass. We ask you right now to look on every church that is open in your name. Bless them, O oh God, and help them to spread the word that I know my Redeemer lives, for he lives in me. We ask you right now, O oh God, not only to look on our church, but look on every church. And look on those folks in the Middle East that are on the verge of starvation. Help them, O oh God, to survive until food can be given to them. We pray, O oh God, that you would touch the hearts of those that are preventing the food, that you would touch them and cause them to have mercy on their fellow man. We ask you right now in the name of Jesus, look on our nation. For, Father, you, you know that we are in a bad situation. You know that there are so many that are claiming to be Christians that have only a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Right now, in the name of Jesus, touch them and turn them around before it's too late. This and all blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. We are thankful and grateful for we have this opportunity to continue with our study tonight as we talk about growing our relationship with God. And after all, that's what it's all about, growing our relationship with God first thing we need to do is contemplate God's love. Think fully or think deeply about the love that God has for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life then we need to celebrate God's comfort. When we look at Psalm 119, verses 49 through 56, uh, we ought to celebrate the comfort, comfort that knowing God's word brings to us. That knowing God's word should give you peace, should give you ease, should give you an understanding. The old song says, I've got 
peace of mind. I've got a joy that I never could find. I've got love at last that cannot be surpassed. I've got the brightest star to shine. Heaven is on my mind. But most of all, I got Jesus, and I know he's mine. Knowing the word is what we should all be striving for. Remember Psalms 119 and part of verse 49 says, Remember the words to your servants upon which you have caused me to hope. Remember what you said, Lord. Remember the word that you gave to me. And when I think about your word, it causes me to hope. Now, we look at Matthew 7 and 25 as we begin tonight's session. We look at it and it says, and this is from the New King James, and the rain descended and the floods came and the wind blew and beat on the house and it did not fall for it was founded on a rock. We often first come to Jesus for what he can, for what we can get from him. We are looking for something when we come to Jesus. Harmony in the home. Salvation from sin. Entering into eternity. Straighten or strength for success. Then at some point, God takes us through a lonely, desperate wilderness. In that place, many shadows many shallow Christians will walk away from him. That happens in John 6 and 66. Then Jesus asked the 12 disciples, will ye also go away? And in verse 67, Simon Peter answers him and says, but Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go you have the words to eternal life well several years ago God led me into a wilderness the pain and grief I shared when my mother passed away for some months, I couldn't even say she was going on to a greater reward. But once I got past that wilderness, once I got past that pain and that heartache, remembering the words of my mother. Remembering the prayer that I heard my mother's pray. She said, Lord, let me stay here long enough to see my little child get grown. And when he gets grown, oh Lord, I'm leaving him in your hands. I want you to take care of him after I close my eyes. And I, for a long time, used to wonder about that. I used to wonder why did mama say that? She said to me, she said, boy, I'll be praying for you because I know I can't, I'm not going to be here with you always. And I want you to be well taken care of after you're gone. And that's why some of the things I think happened to me that did 
after she was gone. And I remember the words of the 23rd song a lot of times. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. And we just mentioned when God strips us of our earthly blessings, we realize we need his presence more than anything else. In verse 57 of Psalms 119, the psalmist declares, You are my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep your word. The word portion means a lot me. Portion, my inheritance. God presents God's presence is our great inheritance living in us, his presence within us. There's a little piece of God in every human being, every earthly blessing. And I think some of us need to be reminded of this constantly. Every earthly blessing is temporary. Here today and gone tomorrow. You know what I'm talking about? Your car can be running good and you can have it almost paid for it. I'm getting ready to make the last payment. And you go down to the local grocery store. And while you in the store, somebody come through the park and let them run into your car and tear it up. Now you got to start all over again. Every earthly blessing is temporary. Don't get attached to earthly blessings. Never get attached to earthly blessings. We need, we want them, but don't get attached to them. They are temporary. You going to leave them one day. Even the supernatural resurrection of Jesus' dear friend Lazarus was temporary. He eventually became ill again and died. It's the same for every person who receives physical healing in this life. God has healed me from double bypass but I know that if I keep living one day I'm going to get sick again everybody that's received a physical healing in this life you know that it's only temporary therefore we must seek the healer and not the healing. The one that did the healing is the one you ought to be seeking and trying to hold on to. The eternal joy of the Lord does not come through temporary blessings in this life. We read in verse 58, I entreat thy favor with my whole heart. Joy is found when we seek God with all our heart. Joy. As I often say, we often talk about when we go to church and, and we talk about somebody ought to praise the Lord. Well, you can't praise the Lord until you worship him. As a result of your worship, That's what causes the praise. The first step in drawing near to God is to examine the, the direction of your life. Verse 59, the psalmist declared that when we begin to think on God's ways, something happens. Psalm 119 and verse 11 
and verse 59 says, I, I gave thought to my steps and my feet were turned into the way of your unchanging word. I thought about my steps and my feet turned to your unchanging word. Now, sometimes that's called repentance. The psalmist repented. Repentance is the realization you are in the wrong place and going in the wrong direction. Part of the problem that we have today is that many of us don't want to admit when we're going in the wrong direction. Well, there's a story that's told about a man uh, that was on going on a camping trip and he was going and he was walking and he looked up and he saw a sign that said French Lake. And the man looked and thought to himself, I don't remember seeing French Lake on my route when I was planning this walk. So he pulled the map out and he looked at the map again. And his heart began to sink when he found it. The map showed that he was in the wrong place, headed in the wrong direction. All that walking he had done was for nothing because now he has to go back the other way. When we hear the gospel, we have a similar heart sinking experience. God's word shows us we are in the wrong place and headed in the wrong direction. Now you got to make a decision. Do you accept the truth of God's mouth and turn to go the right direction? Repent? Or do you reject the truth of the map and stay on the, your own course? Sometimes, I don't know about you, but there have been some times I'd be calling myself following the GPS and realize that GPS has taken me someplace where I don't want to go. Taking me all the way around the mulberry bush. And that ain't where I want to go. The story goes that that evening he finally got to where he was supposed to be. It was starting to get dark and he couldn't lose no time. He began to step a little bit quicker. Because he was trying to get to a destination before it got dark. You should have heard the same sentiments in the psalmist's voice in verse 60. When you read that verse, you, he said, I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Has the word of God, when you study the word of God, does it cause you to change your mind? Does it cause you to change direction? when it reveals to you that you are headed in the wrong direction. You are not following the directions of God, but you are following the directions of your own thoughts. When the light of God's word reveals we have wandered off course, we should make those changes immediately. Hurry up. Chain direction. In the final verse of this stanza of Psalms 119, we see a repeated refrain as the psalmist tries to live faithful to God's word. 
What are we living faithful to today? What are we living faithful to? Is it the word of God? Or is it what psychiatrists say? Is it what we think is best for us? Is it what we have determined that that's what we want to do or that's what we want to be? Or do we consult the word of God so that we can stay on the right path? However, as this man, the psalmist, press onward in God's way, he finds other faithful companions. That's why we come to church. That's why we join church. That's why we stay in church. We need to find other folk that are just as faithful as we are. Every time God's people plan a gathering, Satan and the lost world conspire to keep us apart. In verse 61, the psalmist right. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, which means that ungodly forces are surrounding the psalmist. These evil forces do not want God's people together into God's presence for worship and good work. Notice what I said. These evil forces do not want God's people together in worship into God's presence in worship and good works. Satan probably thinks if I can just keep them up late on Saturday night with entertainment or pressure them with social commitments or get them signed up for a sports league or make them work long hours and be exhausted and be suffering from exhaustion or, or get them or get their lost friends to make fun of them or hook them up or get them hooked on a video game. Then they may not gather with other Christians to be encouraged and equipped. Sunday school. Nobody wants to get up early enough to come to Sunday school. Why? Why don't you want to come to Sunday school? Why? Are you afraid? If you study the word of God, you might do better. The old expression is when you learn better, you do better. Now let's look at this final verse for tonight. Psalms 119 and 64. The earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. Give me knowledge of your rules. The psalmist said, and that's from the Bible in basic English. The earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. Give me knowledge of your rules. And how are you going to get knowledge of God's rule unless you pick up the word? Study the word. Read the word. Sunday school, Bible study. Listen to the preacher. The word. A closer relationship with God. You can only get closer to God through the word. You got to have the word. Without the word, your relationship with God will not grow. It only grows when you get into the word. And as you get into the word, you start to transform. What a, an astonishing operation has the grace of God. It's astonishing how the grace of God can change you. In the midst of want, 
in the midst of poverty, afflictions, and bondage, it makes those who possess it happy. The grace of God, you cannot have a dime and know you got the Lord on your side and you're content. You happy. I'm happy with Jesus alone. I may be in poverty, I may be in affliction, I may be in bondage, but I'm happy. And your enemy, when they see you in that state, can't figure out, I've done this, that, and the other, and yet they happy. When Christ dwells in the heart of, by faith, we have nothing but goodness around us. Even though you ain't got a lot, everything is good. It's good and very good. That's what God said when he created the heavens and the earth. Every time he made something, he said good and very good. To grow in our relationship with God through his words, we need to contemplate God's love. Think about God's love. Celebrate God's comfort. When he comforts you, you ought to celebrate. When he, you need to concentrate on God's presence. When we go to the house of prayer, you ought to have it in your mind already. When you walk through the door, the presence of the Lord is here. God's presence is here. And in his presence, there is peace. In his presence, there's love. In his presence, there is joy. Whenever you're in the presence of the Lord, everything ought to be all right with you. I'm all right with the world. Even though I'm going through a tough time, it's still going to be all right. Growing your relationship with God through the Word. That's my time for this evening. God bless you and may keep you. Pray for those folks in the southern part of the nation. They're having some very bad weather, uh, I say bad, tornadoes and flash flooding and uh, such like. It seems like uh, they are having a hard time. It seems like every time you turn around that they're going through one natural disaster or another. And believe it or not, and I'll say this and I'll leave it alone, that's the reason our insurance is so high right now. Because every time you look around, these insurance companies you got to pay out money. And they're trying to make it up by increasing our premium. Not but so much because of what's happening here, but because of what's happening in other places that has to be paid for. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we are thankful and grateful for another opportunity to study your word. Allow your words, O oh God, to enter into our hearts and minds so that we might become better servants unto thee. We ask you, O oh God, to open up our minds, open up our hearts. Let it sink deep within. Let it sink in so that we can be more loving and compassionate one to another. That we will be able to express joy even in the midst of sorrow. We can still find a reason for joy. The songwriter said, Oh God, after all I've been through, I still got joy. Lord, we ask that you help us to have that same mind, to have that same spirit, that no matter what we're going through, as long as we have you in our lives, we still have joy. 
We ask this in all blessings in thy son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen.